Good morning again. Um, welcome to our shared reading lesson for today. Uh, behind me you see some of the activities that we've done this week as far as uh, comparing and contrasting things that are the same and things that are um, different. We've used a couple different graphic organizers in order to do this this week. Um, so back on Monday we used two different Venn diagrams. So I compared the two pets that I have. All right, I have a cat and I have um, a fish. So I compared, I put things that were the same about them in the middle and things that were different on the outside. And then from our book, um, what, what do you do with a tail like this? Um, we compared the platypus and the mole, okay, doing the same thing. There was an optional assignment in the Google Drive for you to complete at home. I believe that was the one on taking two games and comparing and contrasting them using a T-chart. So um, then the second day I did a lesson comparing two of Dylan's games where I got out the games. He has uh, two matching games. So that was the same about the one was the Dr. Seuss that matched pictures. The other was the paintbrush that matched uh, colors. All right. And the paintbrush one also had Spanish on it, whereas the Dr. Seuss one was only in English. Okay. Um, then we uh, read again another couple pages from what do you do with a tail like this? And we compared the lizard and the scorpion this time using a T-chart. Uh, we said that they both use their tail to protect themselves, but the lizard uses his tail by breaking it off to get away from predators. And then I left it up to you to say how the um, scorpion protected itself. So I'm gonna go back in the text and find the page that talks about the scorpion. So this was <clears throat> where it starts. What do you do with a tail like this? Okay. And you can see the scorpion's tail over here, okay? And then if we go on, okay, bend this back so we can see a little bit. There's the scorpion. And it said, if you're a scorpion, your tail can give a nasty sting. So if you said that the scorpion uses its tail by stinging predators or something of that sort, that is correct. So I'm going to say the scorpion uses its tail to sting predators. Okay. So we're going to go back today to using another Venn diagram, but just set up a little bit differently, right? So this, this Venn diagram over here, you can see the circles are side by side. And then this Venn diagram here, you can see the circles are like top and bottom. Okay. So um, since we didn't do a shared reading lesson yesterday, but I did have on the Google Drive um, an optional assignment if you wanted. It didn't have anything, that, any work that went along with it, but it was just um, an, a paragraph about two birds, and it comes from um, reading A to Z. So I'm just going to show you what that looked like. And parents, you can access that on the Google Drive. So I'm going to read this real quick, and then um, we will uh, use the, the Venn diagram behind me to compare and contrast. So two birds. What makes these birds the same? Both have black wings. Both have colorful beaks. The birds are different too. One bird has orange feet. It is a puffin. The puffin lives by the sea. It eats fish. The other bird is a toucan. The toucan lives in the forest. It eats fruit. Okay. And parents, again, you can access this on our shared Google Drive. Um, in order to have your child look at this, if you have access to a printer, you can print it out. Um, so, so what I read about the two birds, right? Um, and in the paragraph, it said, what makes them the same? The paragraph actually starts out with a question. What makes these birds the same? So first of all, we know that they're both birds, right? Um, but let me get my headings up here first. Now, when I first start reading the paragraph, I don't know what these two birds are. I actually find that out in the text. So I found out that we have a puffin is one of them. So I'm going to write puffin up here, okay? And then the other one is a toucan. So I'm going to write toucan down here. So this circle is going to be for my puffin, and this is going to be for my toucan. And then remember that everything that is the same about them is going to go in the center here. That's where our similarities go, okay? So, oh, sorry, my other computer went dark. All right, so what makes them the same? They both have black wings. So if they both have black wings, where am I going to write that? In the middle. So, and I'm just making notes today. 
So black wings. Something else that's the same, colorful beaks. Colorful beaks. Um, then it, there's another sentence in the in the paragraph that says they're different too. So now we're going into our differences. So it says that one bird has orange feet, and then I might say, well, which one is it? The sentence after it says it is the puffin. So the puffin has orange feet. So up here, orange feet. Okay, and also it lives by the sea. Okay, puffin lives by the sea. Lives by the sea. Okay, and then, um, oh, it also says that it eats fish. Eats, which makes sense, right? If it lives by the sea or the ocean, it's going to eat fish. And then the other bird is a toucan. The toucan lives in the forest. And the toucan also eats fruit. Now, something I'm wondering, what color feet does the toucan have? All right, so um, I challenge you to, you know, get on that, get on the Google Drive that I've shared and see if you can tell which, what color the toucan's feet are. And if you can't, look it up. See if you can figure out. I just like to have a balance. Like, I usually, you know, teach the kids that with differences, what you put on one side, you have to put on the on the other side too. So like if we know the puffin lives by the sea, well then I want to know if the toucan's different, well then where does it live? Oh, it lives in the forest. And if the puffin eats fish, well I want to know, well then what's different about the toucan? Um, what does it eat? So I did that. And then the paragraph doesn't tell me what color feet the two the toucan has. It tells me what color feet the puffin has. And if you use the illustrations, because sometimes you learn things from the, the photographs or the illustrations that you can't learn from the text. If you look at the um, picture, if you, like I said, if you open the Google Drive and you look at the picture, you can see a little bit of the, the toucan's feet there to be able to tell what color they are. So see if you can, if you can do that. Um, so I just wanted to... Um, Go ahead and finish reading what would you do with a tale like this uh, but our activity today I wanted to be from the two birds that we didn't get to, to go over yesterday and then uh, when we're done reading I do have another activity on the Google Drive which you can click into and it is um, an activity that's very similar to this but it's um, on a different subject matter so it's not birds but it gives the Venn diagram for the kids to be able to go ahead and do and I find that sometimes the the Venn diagram and the workspace on the pages is a little too small for them. So feel free, parents, to draw this bigger for your kids to be able to write in and, you know, give them markers or crayons, make it a little bit more fun than just writing on the, the piece of paper that, that's given. So let's see. We've read tales. We've read what they do with their eyes, right? Oh, here's where we are. Feet. So, what do you do with feet like these? So, take a minute. What animals? Who, these feet, who do they belong to? What animals do they belong to? These feet look webbed, very similar to the toucan that we just talked about. Okay, because I could see, I know I didn't mention it on the Venn diagram, but I could see from the illustration of the puffin. Yeah, the puffin. Did I say toucan? Puffin. The puffin had webbed, webbed feet. Um, I could see it in the illustration. So again, that's another example of how the text doesn't always tell you everything. You have to use the pictures, the photographs, things like that to learn information also. Okay. So what do you do with feet like these? Well, let's see. Starting over here. If you are a chimpanzee, you feed yourself with your feet. Okay. If you're a blue-footed booby, you do a dance. Down here. If you're a water strider, 
you walk on the water. Okay, let's look at the top of the next page. Oh, look at him, he's hanging upside down. If you're a gecko, you use your sticky feet to walk on the ceiling. If you are a mountain goat, you leap from ledge to ledge. Ooh, look at here. So, let's see what this says. What do you do with a mouth like this? So take a minute. What animal, what um, animals do you think these mouths belong to? Let's see. Okay, starting over here. If you are a pelican, you use your mouth as a net to scoop up fish. This reminds me of the movie Finding Nemo. I forget the pelican's name that um, scoops them up in the water and takes them to the dentist's office to try to save Nemo close to the end of the movie. Uh, but that, that reminds me. That's the kind of bird that, that's in the movie there. Let's see what else down here we have. If you're an egg-eating snake eating an egg there. You use your mouth to swallow eggs that are larger than your head. Wow. Down here we have a mosquito. If you are a mosquito, you use your mouth to suck blood. Let's go over to the sign. Here, if you are an anteater, you capture termites with your long tongue. And up top here, If you're an archer fish, you catch insects by shooting them down with a stream of water. Look at that. So the fish, the archer fish, spits the water up and gets the insect that way. Shoots it down with a stream of water. Okay. And then the end, the end of this book is really cool. We talked about a couple of the animals throughout our lessons this week that give just more information than they get than they gave, you know, um, on the pages before. Um, parents at home, if there's any specific animal that your child would like to know more about, please feel free to text me through the dojo and I can record a personalized video for them through the dojo or I can, you know, take pictures of the, the text and send to you. Okay, so there's all the animals that we read in the book. You know, if there's anything they want to know a little bit more about, please feel free to let me know. Um, I'm also going to, um... Put these pictures on the dojo. This book has poetry at the end too and poetry is a really um, good uh, genre of text to read to help kids with their fluency. So and I also um, I put sight word poems on on our Google Drive too. So those are those are great things to have the kids read daily um, to build fluency in their reading. Um, so there's this poem Wings. Okay. So I'll go ahead and read it, and then what I would suggest is I'll, re I'll read it first. You listen to me read it. Then, kids, I want you to go through and try to read it with me, and then, um, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm going to put a picture up on the dojo. Have your parents get on the dojo and look at the picture and see if you can read it, and keep practicing until you can read it with no help, okay? And then we'll do, we'll do another one of the poems tomorrow, okay? So today is Wings by Aileen Fisher. I'll read them the book back here. Ready? Bees have four wings. Birds have two. I haven't any. And that's too few. Okay? So, try it with me this time. Ready? Bees have four wings. Birds have two. I haven't any, and that's too few. So parents, I will upload this link along with um, a picture of the Wings poem for the kids to practice. Try to check out the Google Drive and see the You, you Do assignment for today. Like I said, it's going to use the this Venn diagram. Um, and feel free to, as always, send me any work or anything. Um, I love to give the kids shout outs for some of the things that they're completing at home. 
Um, I'll also put up the schedule for the rest of the day. So I have a science video that goes along with um, the read aloud from this morning, the Tiny Seeds book. And then I'm looking at our schedule, have some lunch, do some physical activity. I uploaded some cla uh, to Class Dojo this morning some websites that Mr. Hill suggested. He's the phys ed teacher at um, Nebinger Elementary. So he found some health websites that, um, that you could work on if, you know, if you wanted to, if you couldn't get outside um, or anything. Uh, try to do drop everything and read. Remember that um, in class, the kids can do at least 15 minutes of sitting and reading silently. And reading includes not just reading the words, but reading the pictures. So during drop everything and read, the kids don't always have books that are right on their level, but they can go through and read the pictures also. Um, and then kids, be helpful. Do a chore around the house. Help, help out. Um, and then I'll see you back this afternoon for our math lesson. For writing, remember, I did a lesson on Monday, and you're working through that for the week with um, writing about your family and illustrating. So not only being authors, but being illustrators, too. All right, I'll see you back this afternoon. Thank you.